Claus. Because he's not welcome in this house anymore. That's why. I don't have your beloved Reverend Carpenter's way with words, because you two don't seem to understand what I'm talking about. No, I think I understand, Dad. You don't want a pervert messing up your home. This is our home, Billy's and yours and mine. Nope, sorry. Not after what he did today. What Billy did today took a tremendous amount of courage. Stand up in front of a group of people, <clears throat> a group of our friends, and happily proclaim himself a pervert. That doesn't take courage. Certainly takes a lack of shame. Hell of a lot of nerve, which apparently he gets from his mother's side of the family. What is that supposed to mean? <coughs> I don't know. I, I guess maybe I just felt lonely up there today, huh? A little betrayed when my only son happily brags about being a homosexual. Dad, I wasn't bragging. You, you leave my side and go stand next to him? Betrayed, you know, it's like it's like Billy sticks the knife in and leaves it there, and then you give it a little twist, you know? I don't know how I'm going to forgive you for this. What Billy did was to stand up for a friend. Andrew Carpenter helped him out when he needed help, and Billy was returning the favor very gallantly, and yes, very bravely, in a way that made me realize what my duty to my son was. Oh, what's that? To embrace perversion and betrayal? To accept him for who he is, whatever he is. He is sick. We have to accept him as he is because we have to love him. I don't. See, if the rules are all changed, if Billy is not the boy that I thought he was, then all bets are off and somebody's going to have to leave this house. I've been living with your mother too long. Billy, what are you doing? Well, see, these jeans and, and sweatshirts I can use, but the dress clothes that you bought me just still look good at the country club. Mm -hmm. I don't have any... You don't have to do this, sweetheart. Now, you take this suitcase and trunk back up to your room, and I'll put everything away later. Mom, I'm going to need some of this junk, all right, when I'm on my way, okay? Why? You're not going anywhere. Dad said somebody's got to leave the house, right? So I flipped the coin in my head, and guess what? It came up me. I'll go. Tennis, anyone? No? Billy, ah! you're broken. Are you satisfied now? Is that what you wanted to do? Make your mother cry? You remember when you won this? You were so proud of it. Photo album, anyone? Priceless record of family trip? Never get off! I'm going now. Don't put that down. Mom, down! <sighs> Allow me. If you want to pack a suitcase, Walter, I suggest you pack your own. What are you, hysterical? No, I'm not hysterical, but I'm going to be if my only son is to leave his home. If you can't accept him, if you can't accept my love for him, then I think you'd better be the one to think about leaving. <laughs> Who are you people? Oh, I guess I might as well leave. My wife and kid have already gone, left whoever you two people are. Now, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. You look you look just like them. You see this? This bunch of happy campers at Yellowstone, the old faithful right over here. No, it can't be you. See, you're a couple of strangers. You know, Dad, I remember the exact day you took that picture. You're right, old faithful was just about to blow, and there we were. 
Then these two guys walk by, you know, touching each other a little too much, maybe talking a little too loud. Do you remember what you said, Dad? Good God, you can't get away from the homos, can you, Virginia? Even out in the wild. Nothing told me and Mom to smile. You know what I'm thinking in that picture there, Dad? You know what I'm thinking? Gee, Dad. If you only knew. You understand, Dad? I've always been a stranger. <laughs>